Welcome to PostgreSQL training. In this slide, I'm just going to describe about the Postgres architecture. So basically, Postgres is a client server architecture. You have a process called as Postmaster, which is listening on the server side. So your client connects to the Postmaster and this Postmaster process will spawn your Postgres process for every client connection. Your client and server can be on a different host or it can be on the same host. It will be most of the time it will be on the different host and they will be communicating using the TCP IP protocol. So let's see the overall architecture of the Postgres. So in the Postgres architecture, you have background process, which are the process which get started when your Postgres server starts. So when your Postgres server starts, it occupies the memory that is your RAM. Okay, so depending on the various memory parameters, X amount of memory will be occupied from the RAM. And then it has your logical structure that is we create cluster. A cluster can consist of any number of databases. Within database, your tables will reside, table indexes function will reside under schema. By default, you have a schema named public. Okay, then you have at the cluster level table spaces. Now different databases can share the same table space that's possible in Postgres. And you have users, which is also at the cluster level. So different users which are created in the cluster can log into different databases. So databases, so users are not specific to a database. They can log into different databases. They have login privilege on all the databases by default. And then you have your physical files. That is in your cluster folder, you have base folder, global folder, you have two different configuration files, pghpa.conf and pg, postgresql.conf file, they are the major configuration files. So this is all the overall architecture of the Postgres. So in background process, you have the postmaster process, which is the first process which is started when your cluster is started. This postmaster process will be listening on a different on the port number. So it is like a listener process. So when a client connection comes to the postmaster process, he will spawn a new process. Once your connection is authorized and authenticated, he will spawn a new process for called as Postgres process. So for every client connection, there will be a new Postgres process spawned and the client connection will directly interact with the new Postgres process from then onwards. Then the remaining are mandatory background processes having serving various functionalities like your stats collector collects the statistics of the activities which are happening in the database. Background writer is responsible for syncing the dirty buffer from your shared buffer to actual data files. So that role is performed by your background process. Your val writer writes from your val buffer to the actual val files. Then you have your logger process, which writes into the log files. Basically all your errors, everything are recorded by this logger process and written to the log files. Now check pointer process is responsible for triggering the checkpoint in your Postgres. So we'll talk about more about check pointer process and the checkpoint, what is checkpoint in the different slides. Then you have your replication process. If you are setting up your standby site in Postgres, then this replication process will launched. Now coming to your memory structure, shared buffers for caching of your uh, table data which is frequently accessed. Work memory, this is the memory which is allocated to every session. So every client connection spawns a Postgres process which will be allocated this work memory which is mainly used for your sorting purpose. Now val buffer records all the changes which are happening in your cluster files and they are written to the val files by the val writer. This background process writes whatever is there in your val buffers to the val files. Maintenance work memory is used for different maintenance activity. There are made different maintenance activities in Postgres. So one of them is vacuum. So auto vacuum uses the maintenance work memory during that particular process activity. So this is the architecture of the Postgres. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any queries, write to me on ramesh.postgres at gmail.com.